Kiko, like I mentioned, the news a little bit slower um, this week. So what I want to do is kind of talk about some more big picture topics, I think, that are going to be a little bit more interesting long term. So I want to ask the question, Kiko, you and I are a little bit different in how we approach collecting, right? So I want to ask the question. I want to ask the chat. Chat, weigh in on this one. Chat, let us know what your thoughts are. Does more figures equal a higher quality collection or does it equal higher quality stress? Because Kiko, you have to think about it. You know this. You got boxes. You got storage space. You got display space. You got more displays because you have more figures. It does come with its own set of drawbacks, but it's also its own set of uh, positives, of, of great things, because you have a really impressive dynamic display. We talked about diversity, right? You got more figures. You got more diversity because you have more things to show people. But you got more storage. You got more attic space. Sometimes you have to rent storage facilities. To me, that sounds stressful. That's why, to me, that's not how I collect. I set myself to a firm limit. I'm like, okay, this is about as much as I can handle. I don't want to go over that. Even if I had more space, I don't think I would do that. Probably what I would do maybe is get more art prints. I wouldn't probably buy more figures and have more boxes and things stacked up in my in my closet or in my attic or whatever. So, Kiko, I have to ask the question. Um, you have a lot more figures than me, and you manage it very effectively. How do you do that? I mean, do you view it as a higher quality collection because of the, fig the more figures that you have? I will never say my collection's better than somebody's or anything like that. I don't think anyone can say that their collection is better than anybody's. You know, we, we are all in this together. Volume does not equal a better collection than somebody's. Uh, posing, I think, is more important even than volume at the same point. If you do not care for your figures, I think that your collection looks worse than somebody that has 3 million figures on the wall and they're all just literally jammed into a shelf not pose and just sitting in there. And then you look at Peter's that is perfectly posed and beautiful and given the proper space, lighting, all that stuff. I think that's the difference is what it comes down to. But you definitely hit it on the head is that, yes, I'm proud of the volume and size of the collection that I have. I'm proud of it. I don't think it's better than anybody's, but I'm proud of what I have. But it does mean amplified stress for sure. Because it's like if you, we're going to use Drago as an example. Drago. The more dogs you have, the more things you have to feed, the more shit you have to pick up, the more irritable you have to worry about because there's more things you have to care for. The things that increase, the problems increase. It's, it's exponentially. That's the way it works. And so with this is that I need to worry about cleaning. I need to worry about maintenance. I need to worry about accessories. I need to worry about boxes. And you said it. I, I have a storage unit that I have to put some of these boxes in because the, the Ecto-1 box is a refrigerator box. Where am I going to put that actually here in my home? How's it going to be going to fit into my little door back there? Um, so yeah, there is definitely a stress that comes with it. But I, as I said, the quality of your collection should be based upon whether or not you care for the amount that you have. If you have too many and you can't care for it, you have a collection that I would say you need to scale back on because you can't give them the proper love and respect that they have. Accumulating things does not make a good collection. If you can properly manage it and you can properly clean it, main, maintain it, and still curate it the right, the right way, that's what makes a good collection. So whether that's 400 figures or 40 or four, it doesn't matter. As long as you give them the quality and attention they deserve, just like they're your children, as long as you <laughs> give them the love and respect that they all deserve and that you don't have any favorites of, above all. So I have to lie, though. I do have some favorites. So maybe I'm breaking my own rule. That blue Batman, dude. <laughs> you better believe well i told you as soon as it gets here as soon as it gets here dude as soon as you get there i'm gonna fly in just to see the batman I'm like kiko bro i'm here man to see the batman all right that's, that's come all in I and see the batman i'll take you to dinner and then you can fly home yeah exactly then i'll fly right back home dude you just gotta drive me back to the airport though you gotta drop i'll me do that the airport. for yeah, sure drive me over the airport or have amy do it or something but yeah dude i'm uh yeah it's interesting because i look everyone has, i've seen some really like justin has a lot of figures has a great collection you have a lot of figures a great collection there are a lot of collectors out there who have accumulated a large amount of figures and displayed them very effectively to me look i've mentioned this before when you move things are different it, <laughs> when you it's dude, bad man when you sure. move Look, most people look, if you're settled in your home, you're like, this is my home for the next lifetime, right? Then you're like, this is great. And I don't have to move any of this stuff. But if you ever have to move, I can just tell you, moving collectibles is going to make you reevaluate your hobby <laughs> because it's just not fun, bro. Statues too. You're, all, you're worried about breaking something. You have Man. to pack something back up. You have all these figures. Like, honestly... With my figures, I just kind of laid them down and kept them safe and then put them in my car because boxing them all back up and then reposing them all, 
Like Mm -mm. just a pain in the ass. If I can maintain the pose to a degree, I'm going to try to do that. So yeah, I can just tell you, man, moving your collectibles or even moving them to a different room. When I had to move them all out of here to build these Maja cases, I was like, what am I doing with my life, bro? <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? There's like I had to move everywhere. just empty boxes. Yeah, out, empty boxes. And I wanted to like kill myself. I'm like, this is not fun. I was like, why am I doing this? Why? Right. But then I when you quit. get it in there, it, like you get the figures in the display and you get everything set up, you're like, this is why. It looks great. It looks amazing. And you feel proud. You know what I mean? But it's just the process along the way, storing boxes, moving figures, breaking down shipper boxes. Like it's just. Yeah, man, it's it's something you got to factor into this collecting journey. And when you think about how big your collection is going to be, it's something to factor in, bro. There's there's absolutely drawbacks, Kiko. Like the the storage space, dude. Come on now. I would say storage is probably honestly one of the most underutilized or appreciated parts of collecting because if you don't have the right way, and I'm not just talking about boxes. I mean, most likely you need to put those accessories somewhere. That's what they're known for, especially six scale figures is how much stuff you get with them. Where are you putting those? I mean, you have to put them somewhere. You're not throwing them away. So what are you doing with them? Being able to manage that effectively is a huge part of the collecting business. Yeah, I agree, bro. I agree. So guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, yeah, we got a pretty strong 83% no saying more figures does not equal higher quality collection necessarily. So interested to see uh, some more thoughts on that, some comments along that. So I think that'd be cool.